make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces and your house shall be made into a dunghill. Okay, now we're going to see that in death, these Chaldeans are going to have a job in, in what you call, I would call, you know, sanitation. Because the king said he's going to make their homes a dunghill. <clears throat> and, and I don't think it would be a stretch to say that the king is probably also telling them, looking at the way things happened back in those days, that I'm going to kill everybody in your family. Your house shall be made a dunghill. Wow. That's pretty heavy, don't you think? Now, Little do these Chaldeans, astrologers, magicians, Baptists, Pentecostals, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah Witness, Worldwide Church of God, uh, uh, Hope International, whatever you want to say. Okay. Little do they know that everything that the king is saying here is through the unction of the Holy Ghost. They don't know that this is the Spirit of God speaking to them. If you mess around with this dream, you going to hell. You're going to hell. Okay? Which reminds me of the place called Gehenna. The place of burning. Where they took all the refuse and dead bodies and 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 and, and people that had all kinds of deep and took them out and burned them in this place. And they kept the place burning to keep down the stench. It says, the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me if you will not make known unto me the dream. With the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made of dung the ill. But if ye, shall, if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Don't that sound like God to you? Don't that say, you mess around with this prophecy. See, that, the, Nebuchadnezzar didn't know it was a prophecy. He didn't know it was prophetic. But God, who gave it to him through his Holy Spirit, knew the spirit of truth, that's, that is. He knew. And through that power, God put his own decree on these men using Nebuchadnezzar as a conduit to express it. Wow. And, and, and mind you now, Nebuchadnezzar is a heathen and idolaters and God used him. Wow. To be, give a message to the whole, the wisest men in the world of every realm over which he had authority. Wow. God does work in mysterious ways. It says, his wonders to proclaim. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream and we will show the interpretation. They just keep trying to change the way God works through his servants. In this case, it's King Nebuchadnezzar, the heathen, the idolater, the person that has not studied any or know anything about the will of God. But God is talking through this man prophetically. Wow. Wow. If God could speak through a heathen, he could speak through anybody. They answered again and said, okay, we read that. Verse 8. The king answered and said, I know for a certainty. Now, this is really God speaking to these men. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time because ye see that the thing is gone from me but if ye will not make known unto me the dream that's the key thing that you know that God is speaking through it if you will not make known unto me and guess what God knows that these men cannot show the dream or the interpretation God knows that so these guys are in a pickle because they don't know that they really talking to God through Nebuchadnezzar. They don't know it. 
But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. And he's already expressed what that is. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream and I will know. Tell me the dream and I will know that ye can uh, show me the interpretation thereof. You see? If you're a real prophet, if you're a real person that has a connection with God to do these type of things that only the, the outworking of the Holy Spirit can do, I will know that you could tell me the dream. See, most denominations teach their Christians this. If you have a Bible, you can interpret prophecies. It don't work that way. The Bible says, surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? You see? So, he said, now, you guys just want to, you know, just prepare some lies. That's all you want more time for. Because the more time you get to try to explain this, that's all you're going to do is lie. And look what happens. They actually confess that. And basically tell the king, the whole time we don't be been on your payroll, all these years we've been on your payroll, we've been lying to you. I mean, that is what a soothsayer does anyway. Wow. And that's what the leaders of these denominations do anyway. That's why they all teach something different. That's why they all teach something different. As leaders or angels of denominations. They all liars. I know that's a hard pill to swallow. I don't care if it's Church of God in Christ. Uh, uh, we're, I don't care what it is. Pentecostals of the world. Uh, storefront. Uh, I, you name it. Catholics. Whatever. They all are lying. That's why none of them match up on hardly anything. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth. Watch this. Now they're going to tell on themselves. Now he already said that you, you guys just want more time so you can lie. And that's what you've been doing the whole time you've been on my payroll. Well, then they come back sassing the king. See, back in those days, it wasn't like today you got a president and you know you could just talk back to them uh, with expecting no repercussions. No, 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 no. In those days, the king would say something. You just don't talk back to the king. Your head will get chopped off and everybody in your family. The, this is the king of the world. Okay? But these guys pre felt pretty cocky. You know? They had received so many funds from the state. So many exemptions from the state. Through their non-profit status. And they they got became so prosperous as denominations that they now think they could take on the king. Wow. Not only the king on earth, but the king that set the king up on earth. God. Because God they, they can't even they can't even see that God is working through this man. Nebuchadnezzar. They can't even see it. They don't know God at all. I don't care how many Bibles they have, how many Bible schools they've been to. I don't care how many PhDs they've been to, how many prophet titles they got before or after their name. I don't care. They don't know God. They are not born again. They are tares. And so look what happens here. But if he will not make known to me, okay, I read that. Verse 10, the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such thing. Boy, they're getting sassy. God is prepared right now in this verse to strike them down from heaven through this king. By, by a way of this king, Nebuchadnezzar. We're going to, I'll prove that too. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such thing as, in, as any magician 
astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requires. And there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Now, they basically uh, have... They basically have admitted here that their gods are false. Their connection to these gods that they say they are prophets of or mediums of are false. Their whole practice and the way that they exegete the signs and the wonders and interpret are false. They're, they're basically telling him this right after he told them that they're liars anyway. You just want to lie to me like you've been doing in the past. And they basically said, it's no man that can know these things. I thought you said, and the king is like, I thought you said you guys have a relationship with God. The gods. And by the way, all these denominations that teach in different things, a whole different gospel that's even conflicting to one another. Inside their denominations and uh Compared to the other denominations around them, guess what? They they don't have a relationship with God either. It's right here. They can't have a relationship with God. They can't be God's remnant people if they're teaching outside of the power of the, of the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost. So it says... Verse 12, for this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Now watch this. A lot of people say that this decree didn't actually go forth. But watch this. And the decree went forth. I, I don't know why people say that he didn't kill anybody. The decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they went and sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Watch this, verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to do what? Slay the wise men of Babylon. All the fakes in the realm of Babylon. Isn't that interesting? And I want to tell you something here. Because Israel was always into idolatry. Matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why they were in Babylon in the first place. I wouldn't doubt that some, I, I don't, there's much proof that many of these astrologers and all these kind of people, they were probably, they probably came into Babylon's authority and were still alive. See, Whenever we think about God's people, we always some kind of way, always try to make them exempt of everything. When God gives us sufficient evidence and let us know that the reason why God's people are even in this situation is because they're doing the same thing that the astrologers, soothsayers, magicians. They, Israel had a tough, tough time worshiping other gods. They had, oh, they were plagued with that. Read the book of 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Chronicles. They were plagued with it. Read Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Read, read these books. God's people have always had a powerful attraction to idolatry. You, you can almost open up any place in the Bible and find that. But somehow today, all these churches that think they're God's true church, they always exempt themselves from this stuff that we read in the Bible. This stuff in the Bible is actually about those people, the very ones who would think that they are God's remnant church. That are 